being scammed out of $1.3 million and probably more. I just don't want to see anybody go through that. I will probably struggle for years to come over what occurred to me. You know, I hear myself saying, I just listened to Dr. Phil. What's up dudes, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day as usual. Today we're gonna watch someone's grandma get scammed out of 1.3 million dollars, all right? And I'm gonna be the first to say, I don't even know how this happens. Like after 100K, you know, you kind of, you miss, you mishandle $100,000. How do you not pull your head out of your ass? Maybe I'm just the weird one here, but anymore, if I lose 20 bucks, I'm ready to just start slapping everyone on the face of the fucking planet. You sold your house. I did. You precious woman, am, you sold your house. I am penniless. I was retired. I have to go back to work. How long was it before you talked to him again? Oh, I talked to him right after the show. Oh, hell. <laughs> Grandma, I just want you to know you're very lucky I did not know that you existed because if that was the case, I would have another million dollars of yours sitting in my bank account. I mean, obviously, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, though, this whole situation, it's pretty messed up. I can't even lie. She sold her freaking house. She sold her flipping house for someone on the internet. I mean, we all been a little horny on Maine, right? You know, sometimes dudes nowadays when they're just, they're in the moment, they'll buy like dirty used shit stained underwear. Some people might even break out their wallet and donate, you know, 20 bucks or something to one of their favorite OnlyFans models. Now I haven't seen this video, so I don't know how it officially plays out or anything, but I'm just going to say if grandma really needed some loving, I'm sure she could have got it for a little bit cheaper than $1.3 million. The relationship Jane has with Jonathan is a hot mess. In the year and a half, they've never met face to face. You've told her straight up, this doesn't smell right. You're getting scammed here. And we all have. When I look into Jonathan's heart, I see a very kind person, very affectionate. I look at those lips and all I want to do is just kiss them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and summarize a little bit of this story here because it's pretty drawn out and um, Dr. Phil only allows me so much, you know, of his presence on my channel. So this woman right here met a man. She wants to kiss him on the lips. Kiss him. Now, I don't know this guy's name, so I'll just call him Jared from here on out. So Jared runs a construction company and apparently he did a whole bunch of jobs. He just hasn't finished them yet. So he's in debt at the moment until he can finish these construction jobs and actually get paid. Jared Jared convinced this woman by saying if she sent him an easy meal right now, that would allow him to get some of these jobs done on the construction sites. Then he would receive $10 million and he'll pay her back. He's not being held hostage at a construction site because he's here today. And his photos have been used without his consent. He is not part of this scam whatsoever. He is a victim of this scam. Come on out. Ed, thank you so much. Have you been talking to Jane for a year and a half? No. <laughs> You've never talked to Jane, right? This is the first time. Yeah. Hello. Hello. And this is... All right, so I guess this guy's name is Ed, not Jared. I apologize. I haven't seen this far into the video, but with that being said, hey, uh, Grandma, you still want to give old Ed here a little smooch? Kiss him. I was backstage with Ed, and we took a photo together, and I sent a copy of it to Jonathan. I said... Hi, honey. Don't we look great together? I thought I was done with Jonathan, but unfortunately, I wasn't. Jonathan started apologizing and admitting that he lied to me. I disregarded Dr. Phil's advice because I was so in love with Jonathan, I couldn't believe it was a lie. Now, I understand sometimes people get blinded by love. It happens. I get it. But is this woman mentally insane? Honestly, do you hear how stupid you sound right now? You are saying that you love someone. You have never met them in person. You don't even know what they fucking look like right now. Here you are having to work through retirement for someone that you don't even know. They could be a fat fuck. They could be a woman. And maybe you don't like women. You know what? I'm just going to say. 
say this is part of the TV show. You know, they're just trying to keep us on the edge of our seat here. I refuse to believe someone like this actually exists. All right. There is no shot in hell that she's about to run back to the guy that has essentially fucked over her entire life at this point. I mean, please, for the love of God, just tell me that she has a little bit of common sense. She doesn't need that much, man. Like the bare minimum, the bare minimum amount of common sense. I came to my senses when I looked at my bank account and I was... I was broke. It finally dawned on me that I was being scammed, that I had lost everything. No house, no savings, nothing. In total, I have calculated that I have sent him over 1 million. 300,000. You know, I want to say that we never saw this coming, but let's be realistic here now, fellas, all right? After watching today's episode of Dr. Phil, I just, I think we might have to change support the MILFs to support the GILFs. If I'm being completely honest here, I don't know how to feel about this situation. Like, part of me wants to feel bad, right? You've lost everything you've worked for your entire life. Now, instead of enjoying your retirement, kicking back and just doing whatever the hell you want, now you gotta wake up and go to work in the morning like the rest of us but like at the same time you went to the bank you submitted a wire transfer form or however you sent this guy the money it's just really difficult to feel bad whenever you willingly sent him the cash like I mean you hit the button at the end of the day you know and not just that, but Dr. Phil also brought in the guy who was being catfished with his pictures, and we found out the guy who was catfishing this woman is a fucking liar. He's not in Miami. He doesn't look like that at all. And yet you still got off the show and went and sent him another $300,000? Sometimes in life, man, you just, you gotta learn the hard way. You just gotta fuck something up and then have to fix it, and then you learn. But if grandma does have an addiction of sending people money, you know, I'd, I'd love to pass her my information. So if anyone could hook me up with that, Dr. Phil, you know, from one doc to another, uh, that'd be awfully nice. Anyways, fellas, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I want to give a shout out to the world's greatest channel members of all goddamn time. We have a penis colada, Savarstis, Zingies, and Joseph. Oh my God. Literally the, the greatest people ever right here on your screen, fellas. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But uh, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you want to support the GILFs. And I will catch you guys next time. Later. Oh, yeah. He's not that far. Uh, <laughs> now that's modern warfare. Now that's modern warfare. Isaiah, come he can on. Hear you. Hey, we put the wall hacks yeah, on, that's, bro. That's your dad's name. Ironic? I'm your fucking dad, your whore. No, my <laughs> father's not a saint. Your mom's a fucking whore. Good one, loser. <laughs> Get creative <laughs> with it. I'm not to give him a little lesson in your mama jokes. Yo, know, guys, try defusing next time. Try to stay alive next time, dumb fuck. Nah, I'm trying to win. Yeah, try to kill him. Alright, Tommy Stain. <laughs> Tommy Stain. <laughs> yeah, shut your whore mouth when I fucking speak to you. You're one and two. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Drop down that box. Oh, another round loss for the stains. <laughs> Dude, you're one in fucking three. I'm I not even trying. I'm fucking, fucking you rounds. up, kid, without trying. Oh, yeah, I'm not. Oh, my you. God. I 1v1 you me. Time. Yeah, you camped your ass off for time. one single kill just to fucking die oh, and lose in a fucking right, flame kill, of trash. You you're fucking terrible. You camped your ass off and you're I'm not even trying. You are literally sucking my cock. What a warlord. <laughs> <How's my laughs> what a warlord. What a warlord. Imagine if the easiest way to delight your wife is you just throw a ball across the room. Relationships wouldn't fail anymore if that's all you had to do. Here's Tony. What the actual hell am I looking at right now? Anyways, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day as usual. I think today's video is going to be very interesting. We're going to get to learn about a different lifestyle that probably shouldn't be accepted, but I guess it is. I don't know if these people just grow up without fathers or what the deal is here, but hopefully we'll learn. Let's get into it. My name is Tony and I'm a human pup. I'm Andrew. I'm Tony's husband and trainer. Pet play is any time that a person takes on the role of an animal um, and they emulate that animal, either through their behavior or their actions. Um, some people wear costumes. 
I've been involved in pet play for my entire life. Uh, a lot of kids like to play pretend. They like to pretend to be an animal and they enjoy doing it. I just never grew out of that. You know, if there's one thing I hope you never grow into, it's having children. Because the last thing that we need on this fucking planet is more people like you. It's probably a good thing that I don't have children either. Because if I went to drop my son off at school and there was some kid running around barking, wearing a dog costume, how the fuck am I supposed to react in that situation? I mean, like, besides telling my son to stay the hell away from that thing, can I, like, call animal control and have him take it to the dog pound? How does this shit work? The first time I met you, I was dressed as a dog for Halloween. You were, are you comfortable being uh, fully out? I don't care. He was uh, his female at the time. I remember that he showed up with a little like dog nose painted on. Yeah, it didn't seem weird at the time. I just happened to have all the gear. He was uh, his female at the time. What the hell am I watching right now? He was female at the time? Did you hear what you just fucking said? Did I hear that right? This was at one point a man who transformed into a woman and has now become a dog? What the fuck? Like, this thing needs mental help ASAP, dude. We have bio dogs and I do train them because no barking. But, you know, if you want to make a big stink, that's, you're an adult human, you can do what you want. <laughs> Although you'll be talking to the police if that is necessary. <laughs> Yes, yes, please. That's the most necessary thing I've ever heard in my goddamn life. I'm not gonna lie. I really don't know what the fuck is going on in this video right now. Like, how do you sign up for something like this, you know? Like, if I were to ever become a dog trainer for a human, I mean, the woman would just have to be, like, stupid fucking hot, you know what I'm saying? And no offense to the uh, puppy partner here, but, eh, I mean, you, you know, you know. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm glad these people are willing to put their very odd lifestyle out there on the internet for all of us to see, but aren't you worried about, like, your mother, your father, your sister, you know, like, someone you fucking know, even a co-worker, what if they found out you like this? Maybe in some parts of the world this would be a little more acceptable, but at least where I live, like, dude, you would you would never fucking see the light of day again. I mean, hell, dude, you could even pop in a subway just trying to get a foot-long sandwich, and next thing you know, like, the guy behind the counter is trying to give you a bone because he thinks you're a puppy, and turns out it's just his boner instead. Hey! Hey! Beautiful. What the fuck? There's no way. No, no, no. I'm done. Goodbye. I literally do not want to be alive after watching this video. Like, how do you even become established in this industry, you know? How did they find this woman who just trains people to become horses in her backyard? Like, did she have to go to college for that? Did she just put an advertisement out there on Facebook? I mean, honestly, I'm actually curious. How the hell do you bring this up? How do you make this a business? We've been in the LA Pony and Critter Club for six going on seven years. <laughs> You're so cute. I know. Oh. The event today that was held by the LA Pony and Critter Club is a play date. They're informal. They can be everything from three people to 25 people. Oh my god, dude. Every fucking time I sit here and think to myself, there is no possible way it can get any worse than what I've seen. And somehow they just one-up me every single time. I honestly can't do this anymore. I don't know how people take this shit seriously. Like, how did the cameraman not laugh one single time throughout filming this? I want to say I can't believe people like this actually exist, but yet every time I say that, you know, somehow, some way, there's always someone out there who's crazier. If I were to somehow find my way in one of these pet play circles, I would actually die. I don't know if I would have a heart attack or if I would just internally combust, but somehow you ain't going to see me anymore, fellas. It's going to be the end of the doc. I legitimately think I would feel safer in the streets of Chicago at 3 a.m. with a bunch of cash on me than hanging out with a group of people like this, dude. I don't know why these people just scare the fucking hell out of me.
You know who doesn't scare the hell out of me though? The world's greatest channel members on the face of the goddamn planet. First off, we have Mr. Knee, Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. Guys, I appreciate your support. It really does mean everything to me. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But um, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video if you want to support the hot moms with me. And I will catch you guys next time. Later. Whatever I got here. What I got here. Oh, give me that. Hey, what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you're all having a fantastic day as usual i just got back from vacation so uh i'm doing pretty good myself but don't get me wrong these hoes are not going to be writing prescriptions for themselves so the doc man is back better than ever now if there's one thing i'd like to point out it's that my hand does not get cramps writing prescriptions for hoes all right as most of you probably know, I'm a big music person. I just, I love the musics. And um, the other day I was playing with my tromboner and I can't lie, my hand, it definitely, it started twitching a little bit. Shit was going left, it was going right, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and put that theory to the test here. So obviously these OnlyFans models, hoes. Girl riding a bicycle, you're a stupid hoe. Oh, how nice, your grandma made you some cookies. Well, guess what? She's a fucking hoe too. Ho, ho, and ho. You might think I'm Santa Claus right now, but it's actually a trick play. I'm the Lord Pig himself. Anyways, fellas, I'm back better than ever. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really get demotivated when doing YouTube, but, you know, every now and then, it's nice to just step away for about a week and then come back bigger and better than ever. Now, I know I haven't done this in a while. I've been reacting to a lot of videos, but I'd like to get back into the swing of reacting to some posts. You know, some stupid sh reddit all right so today we're going to be taking a look at your typical gamer girl who just so happens to be a pretty sensitive person oh my god imagine that a gamer girl who's sensitive in her feelings no there's no way i'm so surprised anyways if you guys enjoy today's video please be sure to subscribe to the channel leave a like on the content for the good hot moms out there okay there are some hot fucking moms out there and we need to support them fellas and we're gonna do that by leaving a like on the video and subscribing to dr bolo because i like to help the milfs and yeah let's get into it i recently started playing apex with my boyfriend and his friend i have played the game less than them and i am worse than them at it and I mean, to be completely fair here, like, you are a gamer girl, no one really expects you to, like, be good at video games or anything. I tend to joke about it and do apologize a lot if I feel like we lost because of me. I also had shared with my boyfriend that I feel a bit anxious playing with them since I'm scared of them thinking stuff like, oh, I wish she wasn't here, she is just slowing us down. He had reassured me and said it's fine, it's only fun, etc. I have great difficulty feeling accepted in social situations and am often anxious of people hating me secretly, etc. He is very well aware of this. Alright, so to summarize the first paragraph, paragraph here we have you admitting that you suck ass at video games you are so fucking bad that your friends are making fun of you behind your back and it makes you feel anxious about it don't get me wrong sometimes that is the case you know you look at one of your friends who went like 0 and 17 in a game of call of duty and you're like come on dude are you fucking serious right now Anyways, she then goes on to say, well, recently we had been playing on Discord and I said that they can go one game without me since I needed to go do some stuff and I muted my microphone. Before I had taken off my headset, I heard my own boyfriend go, well, if we win this one, you know what that means. Time to go invisible on Discord and just play together. I'm a pretty sensitive person, but it really made me feel bad. I said in the chat that I actually needed to go so I can't play anymore and just left. I know I'm worse and it's true. They would probably do better if I wasn't playing with them. I just thought they enjoyed playing with me too. Now you see, that's just where you're playing wrong. I don't know how else to say this to you, but he doesn't want to fucking play with you. Give the man some goddamn space, okay? I get there's some couples out there who game together, and that's great. For some people it works, but I'm just saying, in my so humble, so expert opinion, I do not want to game with my significant other. 
when she has her girlfriends over to the house and they're doing their hair and makeup and shit, you don't see me going in the room like trying to just fuck everything up. How come she has to come in on the man trying to play some goddamn Apex? Anyways, I understand that she's a very sensitive person. She's just a little delicate flower in the sunshine with rainbows and unicorns. So I'll be respectful when I say this, but he can play video games without you, you know? Anyways, to wrap up her post here, she says, That kind of just confirmed what I always fear, and I just felt horrible hearing that, especially from my boyfriend. I feel like if I say to him that I heard that, he will just say it was a joke or that I'm overreacting. I don't know what I should really do. I'm scared that this is not a rare occurrence, and I just horrible thinking about the possibility... I just horrible thing. Okay, I read that right. I thought so. The possibility that maybe my boyfriend does this a lot. Are you really this fucking upset because your boyfriend said that you suck at video games? If you said that he sucks at painting fingernails, you think he's gonna fucking cry about it and go make a post on Reddit? I mean, here's the way I look at it, okay? If you really are just fucking ass cheeks at Apex Legends, you can either do one of two things. First, you can get better, you know, play the game, aim, train, do watch YouTube videos, do all that shit. I don't know Apex, so you do, you do all the Apex shit. You get better at the game. That's one opportunity. Or the second option you have is uh, just play games with your boyfriend when it's you and him, you know? Clearly, he's trying to play with one of his homies. He's trying to throw down some absolute fucking heaters right now and uh you're getting in, w in the way i mean honestly a lot of people nowadays when they play video games they're playing to fucking win they're not playing for fun anymore i mean sometimes you play for fun you know and that that's the time where you can play with your boyfriend but again if he's trying to get wins, it's probably best you're just not there. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that at all, alright? If anything, this girl needs to go into some COD search lobbies and get some shit talked to her. Build up that thick skin, woman. Just fucking build it up. You can't be so goddamn sensitive on the internet nowadays. If anything, this whole situation here should motivate you to become a better player. The boyfriend, he just ain't trying to deal with that shit, man. <laughs> he ain't trying to start an argument. This is just one of those situations for this poor fella where there's no win there's really no win you try and hide it behind her back she accidentally found out now she's upset but if you also told it straight to her face you know hey babe you are fucking ass you might possibly be the worst apex player i've ever seen in my life well then you have to deal with those repercussions because now you really hurt her feelings and um yeah again there's no winning here either way you're gonna have to deal with some stupid ass shit here and the man is just trying to play a video game you know he's just trying to fucking win just just leave him and let him goddamn be and if you can't do that simple little task well then i guess you can get one of these and stop by my office anytime you'd like you've been prescribed a hoe Anyways, fellas, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. You know what else I really appreciate? The world's greatest channel members on the face of the goddamn planet. We have Ni Ga Si. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that, uh, but I know you as Penis Colada, my man. So you know what? Shout out to you, Penis. We also got Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. You guys are all the fucking goats. I appreciate you. You're all the greatest. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But uh, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video if you want to support the hot moms with me. And I will catch you guys next time. Later. I mean, the, she looks off the defender. Dana Evans looks the other way. We all looked the other way. This is what you call impressive? Really? This is a highlight in the WNBA? I can't believe SportsCenter is really going to try to convince us this pass was anything impressive whatsoever, okay? I literally see children without arms make a better pass. If we go ahead and roll back the footage here, you'll see there's literally not a defender within 10 feet of this woman, okay? I could damn near park a bus on either side of her and she would have plenty of space. To some of you, this might be the Women's National Basketball Association, but to me, this is the Mickey Mouse Basketball Association. Anyways, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. I really do. 
Anyways, the other day I had to stay late for work and I wasn't able to catch any of the NBA games. So as a normal American nowadays, I got on my phone, went to social media, and I was greeted with nothing other than WNBA shit, all right? Real basketball is on right now and Sports Center, why are you shoving this shit down my throat? And I was relieved to find out I wasn't the only one thinking this way, okay? If we take a look at the comments section here, this is in no particular order here. Nobody watching. Bold of them to have this on while the real players play. The Warriors are playing. Nobody watching this shit. And one of my personal favorites here, we have some soy boy simp who's out here, you know, I can't understand the hate, that was a sick dime. Yeah, for middle school it was pretty cool. Instead of typing some dumb shit out like that on the timeline, maybe just go back to wearing your fedora and drinking your green juice. You stupid fucking stupid fuck. Anyways, if I'm being completely honest with you guys right now, I don't think anyone really has an issue with the WNBA. The main issue we all have here is that we don't want to fucking watch this shit, okay? If we wanted to watch the WNBA, guess what? We would. We would fucking turn it on our TVs. We would follow them on Twitter. But yet, here you are shoving this shit down our goddamn throats once again and when i say this i really mean it bro if these players would just shut the fuck up and play basketball no one would really have an issue with them but since they like to run their mouth and you know man it's just it's sad but it's really the only way they'll ever get media attention is if they just say some outlandish shit you really think you deserve the same amount of money as lebron huh <laughs> oh that's funny Anyways, fellas, now that we've seen the circus, okay, we understand what we're talking about at this point. Let's get into a little bit deeper subject here. So we're once again going to be listening to these girls cry about how they're just making pennies and dollars for playing basketball for quite literally no one in the stands. I mean, they damn near give the tickets out for free at this point, and people still don't show up. They still don't show up to watch them. Anyways, I'm not going to touch too much on the WNBA's finances. I think we're all familiar at this point. And if you're not, just know that the WNBA loses about $10 million a year, okay? They don't turn a profit every single day. They're fucking throwing money in the fire. And they're expecting the men to bail them out because, let's be real, if the NBA did not exist, the WNBA would never even be a thought. I'm sure it has something to do with taxes. You know, Uncle Sam might be letting this one slide by a little bit. Anyways, I'm not supposed to be talking about the finances. Let's just get into the video. I'm, I'm really tired of seeing them complain about the lack of pay because, because they're doing themselves a disservice by just complaining. This is Golden State Warriors star Draymond Green. You know, and, right, they're not and, just complaining. Huh? They're, they're not just complaining, really. But they are because they're not laying out steps that they can take to change that. You know, one thing to keep in mind here is that typically an employee is paid based on their value to the company. Not because you have a fucking vagina and you shoot balls through hoop. You can't even fucking put a ball through the hoop if you tried, all right? In the history of the WNBA, you collectively have 28 dunks. That's it. 28 fucking times. And yet here you are telling us you deserve more money. You want more money, but yet you don't provide the value. The only value you're providing is a great meme for Twitter every now and then. And with that being said, I'm sure you can probably tell by now, I agree with what Draymond has said here, all right? If you're not going to put a plan in place, follow that plan and execute it, then why should the league owe you any more money than what they already do? They're overpaying you as is. Draymond, have you done your research? Have you asked us questions? Don't you think we've tried? I've created a TV show about uh, these kind of issues. It's a dramatic comedy. It's called Fair Game. I've gone to uh, Spring Hill Entertainment. I've gone to uh, the, uh, Sony where uh, uh, Steph Curry people are. We are turned down. Oh, we don't want to show about WBA. We're trying to get our story out. So Draymond, do your research before you, you tell us we need to do this and we need to do that. I hate this answer. I fucking hate this answer, man. Oh, you made a TV show about basketball? Oh, cool. That's really awesome. Uh, I also made a YouTube channel a long time ago. It got zero views. Literally none. You don't see me knocking on YouTube's doorstep like, hey, Susan, where the fuck's my money? 
Anyways, with that being said, this is quite literally the worst answer she could have given. All it does, in my opinion, is scream self-entitlement, okay? And here's a little life lesson for you, okay? I learned this from my great-grandfather. Uh, life doesn't owe you shit, so if you want something, you have to work for it. Oh my god, that's crazy, I know. My grandfather was really a rocket scientist when he said that. Anyways, long story short here, no one gives a flying fuck that you made a failure of a TV show, and no one cares that you went to some convention that may have talked about the struggles of the WNBA, but guess what, once again, no one gives a shit. Now, I will say, I know it's not all of the league, but for some reason, you know, the 1% has the loudest voice, and that really goes with anything. I mean, hell, even in Call of Duty, when they sell a skin for more than what they should, you know, people get pissed, they put it on Twitter and YouTube, and stuff but yet 99% of the player base they don't care they just they're just not gonna buy it if it's too much money and realistically I feel like that's the same case for the WNBA all right I understand that most of the players probably don't really complain about the pay most of them I would like to think at least have some common sense and realize they're getting paid very very well for a dying business another thing I'd like to point out the fedora wearing simp who made this video I like how he included this quote here he said whenever a select group of people gender race ethnicity religion is subjected to inequality pointing it out to those with the power to generate change tends to be perceived as complaining this quote was obviously brought up in reference to draymond green here where they're saying that draymond does have the power to make change in the wnba uh, but he chooses not to and instead he says the women are just complaining the funny thing is though 99 percent of the rest of the goddamn population on this planet perceive it as complaining as well. And obviously, no offense to Mr. Green here, but does he really have the power to change this inequality? I mean, for crying out loud, you have fucking LeBron, like the face of basketball across the world, representing and supporting the WNBA, but yet, you think Draymond's gonna have any change over whether this league is successful or not? And more importantly, it's not Draymond's fucking problem. It's yours. This is your problem to deal with. I think he honestly gave good advice here. It wasn't too harsh in my opinion. If anything, it was like kind of a wake up call, something that you fucking need every now and then. Sometimes you just gotta get your ass handed to you and it'll make you realize, oh my God, I have to make a change. I gotta do something about this. I really think that's all Draymond was doing here. I don't think he was meaning to be harmful or hurtful when saying this phrase. And honestly, the advice he gave was good. If you wanna make more money, put together a plan and stick to it, but yet, here you are just fucking complaining imagine that anyways guys i think that's enough for the circus today i'm sure you can tell i can talk about the wnba all freaking day dude you know what else i can talk about all the time though is the world's greatest channel members we have ni ga savarstis zingies and that's it guys thank you so much for for being a channel member here i really do appreciate it your support is much appreciated if you would like to support the channel yourself consider becoming a member today uh more importantly though fellas be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new leave a like on the video if you want to support the hot moms out there and i'm not talking about these women who complain about making like 200k a year playing basketball i'm talking about the hot moms out there man the fucking milfs okay leave a like for the goddamn milfs if you won't do it for me at least do it for them and with that being said i'll catch you guys next time later you know you just see the stories about the guys we hear their stories all the time the fuck you say to me you little shit My name's Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Pokeman to uncover the truth about how becoming the highest paid woman in streaming has resulted in relentless hate campaigns and purposely misconstrued headlines that have forced her to rethink her entire sense of self. You know what's funny is that Pokemane could literally breathe wrong and people on YouTube would still make hateful videos about her. Um, it's me by the way, I'm the people. Anyways, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. 
Anyways, I stumbled upon this video talking about how Pokimane made it to the top of her career, but yet at the same time, she faces a lot of scrutiny that other streamers don't have to. I'm sure most of you can get a pretty good guess where my stance is on this situation, but if you can't, let me help you out. I'm sure it's very, very difficult to read comments where people might say like mean words to you whenever you're a multi-millionaire living in a very expensive house, which you don't have to leave by the way. It's not like you're out in the hot sun laying fucking bricks or anything. Hell, you ain't even got the stress that most streamers have to go through nowadays. Like, they have to rely on being good at a video game and staying at the top of their craft. Meanwhile, you, you just have to, like, watch stupid, unfunny TikToks online and that's it. Like, that's your fucking life. Anyways, I'm sure this is going to be painful to watch at times, but let's just get into it, fellas. There is constant media surrounding your every single move. Oh, jeez. There's thousands of articles about you, at least one every single day. The only time I do know about those articles is when my mom or family members bring it up to me. I have some article headlines here that are very oh, spicy. <laughs> So I'm going to read the headline and then okay. I want you to tell me what what was actually going on. I'll do my best because on God, sometimes I read things and I'm like, I did that. Oh, you mean like when you got someone deplatformed off Twitch because his followers spammed L plus ratio in your chat. Yeah, you fucking did do that. You can't convince me that these beta soy boys over at Twitch don't bow down and kiss Pokimane's feet every day. Star Pokimane reveals stunning condition which would have forced her to retire earlier. What is it? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> what do you mean? She said, if it wasn't for the influx oh. of female viewers, female streamers, and just more diverse community members, I think I likely would have retired from streaming this year. They made it sound like a disease. I thought you had a disease. I was mm. thinking of like pivoting away, but mm. now that I see so many more female viewers, people mm. of color, like different minorities, it makes me feel like it's becoming more inclusive. All right, so I think it's pretty safe to say by now, this guy is pretty fucking cringe. I guarantee he has a Pokemane poster that he rubs his dong all over at home. I don't know if he thinks laughing this hard at jokes that are just simply not funny is going to actually get him laid, but newsflash for you, buddy. It's not. Anyways, to address what was actually said here, Pokimane was going to quit if she didn't start streaming to more people of color and women and yada yada. She does not fucking care, okay? She does not care what you look like, who you are, what you like to put inside your holes at night. When you've reached the heights that Pokimane has, there's literally only two things you care about in life at that point, and it's uh, money and viewership, all right? If she ain't making money, why would you be streaming? And if you ain't streaming, streaming to a lot of people, you ain't making money. Now, with that being said, do you think Pokimane really cares about all this inclusivity in her chat and stuff? Fuck no, dude. You think that this woman can work a nine to five job like the rest of us? I mean, if that's the case, I'm sure Bill Gates is going to be the next guy to start cleaning shit stains off the toilet in the bathrooms at Microsoft too. Considering you stream for so many hours, is it kind of running through your head like, this could be taken out of context. This could be taken out of context. So before she answers this question, I just want to point something out here. You know, we used a little bit of factual information in a video for once because, you know, Pokimane, dude, she streams so many hours. Oh my God. It must be so difficult. Anyways, in the last 30 days, Pokimane has streamed for a total of 90 hours. Now that might sound like a lot at first, but, um, if you think about it, at least where I live, most people work 40 hours a week and they do that for four weeks a month. That puts your typical worker around 160 hours hours a month so uh yeah again if you think about it if this is really her full-time job now i know there are times where you work off camera not necessarily for her because she has soy boy simps who will suck her toes and do it for free but again if you're only working 90 hours a month that's essentially half of what everyone else is working so you know yeah your mental health that must just really be suffering right it must be so difficult being you in fact if you look at your screen i went on the twitch leaderboards and i tried to find where she's ranked at currently for the amount of hours streamed this month and dude i sat here and i clicked and i fucking clicked and i kept clicking anyways i got down to like 3,000th in the world currently for the amount of hours streamed on twitch and pokimane is not even close again we're in the 240 range and she is at 90. i felt that pressure a lot and initially it was like should i be super careful about everything that i do mm. but then you're essentially putting yourself in a very small box, and that yeah. is not fun. Literally anything can be taken out of context. 
Someone implied that you were doing blackface because you allowed your hair to be natural. They just don't know that I'm Moroccan and Morocco is in Africa, so that's just my natural hair. If anything, throughout my life, I've done the opposite. I've yeah. like chemically straightened my hair. Yo, chemically straightened team, what's up? Okay, I think I've seen about enough of this guy. Buddy, listen, I hope you get pegged by Pokey or whatever you're wishing to get out of this interview. I don't know personally who the fuck is gonna sit here and watch a 26 minute long video about Pokimane saying, she has the right to have curly hair because she's Moroccan like this is really the best topics you could have picked here Like if I were in that guy's shoes, I would at least be asking her. Hey pokey You know, why'd you say the n-word a couple years ago? And why'd you bring up the hub on stream that one time? Oh, and let's not forget how much you love minorities that you went out and got a black guy banned off twitch because of some Stupid shit some stupid shit that his followers said anyways I think this video had a good idea behind it, but the actual execution was what we like to call in the industry piss poor. I just thought this video was going to be targeted more towards like Pokimane's controversies and instead we just got like, hey, what's your hair color? And then Pokimane will give some stupid ass answer like, oh, well, you see, I'm Moroccan, so my hair is supposed to... No one cares, all right? No one fucking cares. Honestly, I'm not sure how much of this I can show in my personal video because I've been getting hit pretty hard by the copyright strikes. But just know if if you were wondering how you could waste the next 26 minutes of your life listening to a multi-millionaire complain about how difficult her life is, meanwhile, we all know she's living the easiest fucking life in the United States probably, uh, but yeah, if you want to get brain cancer, which I highly suggest not doing, but if you want to because because you want to, then I have just the video for you. Anyways, fellas, I think that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, but you know what else I appreciate? The world's greatest channel members of all time. We have Mr. Nee, Ga, Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. Guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your support. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But um, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content, and I will catch you guys next time later where people would try to accredit a female streamer's success to their male partner shut up bitch You know, man, I wish I could say this in a nicer way. I really do, but um, unfortunately, I just can't. No one gives a shit that you record yourself for TikTok, all right? If you were an actual somebody in the fitness industry, you would work out at a private gym. You wouldn't have these issues, but... You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Anyways, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. I really do. Uh, but with that being said, I'm sure you guys get an idea of what we're going to be taking a look at here today. Now, I might be an asshole. I'm not going to deny that at all. But if there's one thing I'm not, it's an asshole in the gym. At least I like to think so. Like, for instance, if I go to the gym and I see a fat person running on the treadmill, I'm not the type of person to record them and make fun of them behind their back. Instead, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, good for you. Good for fucking you. Now, don't get it twisted. I know I've made a couple Lizzo jokes throughout my days, and uh, they're well warranted, I'd say. But whenever a fat person goes to the gym and they're working towards a better lifestyle, to me, that's the equivalent of making fun of someone who has cancer and is going to see a doctor. Anyways, today we have a woman on TikTok who was recording herself working out, and she claims that a guy in the background was staring at her ass. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this. Watch the stare I get before my workout. So the first thing I took away from this video was that you're okay with everyone on TikTok staring at your ass, but this one guy clearly just barely glanced at your fucking butt cheeks for a very small amount of time, but yet you're upset? You're upset that one man kind of like, kind of looked at your ass, but yet all these little kids, all these little Timmys and Jimmys on TikTok is somehow acceptable with you. To me, that just doesn't make any sense, especially you're wearing these tight ass fucking booty shorts. 
afterwards, okay? Let's let's not leave that out of the equation as well. Now, I don't know if this woman is just out of video ideas or what her issue is, but I really think she's reaching here, okay? Let's just say the guy did. He did take a little tiny peek at the booty. It's not like he was being creepy about it. I mean, hell, if anything, he's just walking in that direction looking at an open room. I mean, the quality of this video was dog shit, so we can't really see where his eyeballs are looking, but I think you can get a pretty good idea. Anyways, I just think it's funny. This girl's butt hurt. She really thinks this guy was like intensely staring at her asshole while she's sitting here doing a workout. Meanwhile, it's perfectly acceptable for her to film the guy. She has the guy's whole entire workout on video, but yet yeah, that's not an issue. Anyways, Joey Swole actually reacted to this, so let's see what he has to say. I don't like how you say in the caption that you posted this because it's funny. Women are harassed in gyms and it needs to stop. This is not a joke. It's also not a joke to portray somebody in a video to make them look like a pervert or someone that stares at women in your gym and community. This can be horrible to this man's image, his family. You need to do better. Mind your own business. Honestly, I think Joey brings up a pretty good point here. There are women out there that actually get harassed in the gym, and that's not acceptable, but when it comes to this woman, she's posting this trying to be funny, and I think we all caught on pretty quickly that, one, this woman is not funny. Her sense of humor sucks. Two, she's trying to do everything she can to get a couple extra views on TikTok, and honestly, it's sad. It's fucking pathetic that she's come down to this level. I mean, the booty shorts weren't enough. Now she's got to hurt some innocent person by doing this. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure this guy's gonna be fine and he'll continue to live his life, but it's just funny because, like, there was no need. There was literally no reason for doing this. Again, I'll just never understand how you get upset because some guy briefly looked in your direction, but meanwhile, you're fine posting your ass all over Twitter and, and TikTok and shit. And it's fine when little Jimmy's at recess and he's sitting there with the boys huddled around the basketball goal. They can all watch you bend over and shit. That's fine, but, um, this is not, again, dude, that just, that literally does not compute in my brain. Anyways, fellas, I think that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I also really appreciate the world's greatest channel members of all goddamn time. We have Mr. Niga, Singh, Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. Guys, thank you so much for your support. It really does mean everything to me. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But um, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video if you enjoy the content, and I will catch you guys next time. I'm later. Dude, it just so like, do any of you right get way. bitches or? It just uh, ended up doing that. I get bitches all the time. Personally, I, I have she a gets bitches too. See? Oh, oh okay. I, I get bitches favorite. in my chamber. Yeah, long, long-term relationships we all get still going on. Oh yeah, shit, that dude, sounds dude, fucking hey, yo, horrible. I'm sorry for your loss. Cringe, bro. Cringe, bro. It's, it's, it's long not. time. No, actually, it's, it's really not. Yeah, no. So what I'm getting from this is that none of you get bitches, right? I, I, bro, bro, I am an I am I am a classified e boy who can part his hair properly. I can get bitches all the time. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what would you say if I was taken for the last three years? Who cares? Taken for the last. I, that would be understandable. I'm going on two. Yeah. Yeah, what, what would you say yes, if I was women. taking for like yes. nine months? Women. Maybe. Nine months, See, bro? Oh, shit, bro. Dude, I don't think I. See, we got These people scare the shit out of me. All the time. <laughs> oh, my God. It's sinking. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? It's gone. Bye bye. Bye. Oh. Hey, Cardi, I don't mean to interrupt your video or anything, but could, could you help a brother out, please? You literally cannot make this up, dude. This poor fella has probably worked his entire life to get that boat, and here he is just trying to stay alive at the moment, and Cardi is just pointing a camera at him, making fun of his boat sinking. Now, I'm not saying I expect Cardi B to swim out there and be a hero, you know, she's no David Hasselhoff, that's for sure, but you could at least, like, put down the camera and maybe call someone who could help this guy? Now, let's say the roles were reversed here and Cardi B's boat was going down. Meanwhile, there's a guy on land just videoing her struggling to get out of this situation alive. Do you think Cardi's gonna remain calm? Yeah, probably not on that one, but I will say there is a good chance those personal flotation devices in her, uh, yeah, in that area right there, 
it could save her. They might float. They actually might float. Anyways, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. As usual, I was doing pretty good. It looks like Cardi was doing amazing. Anyways, fellas, I can't lie. My girl cheated on me this weekend. It was very, very difficult. I caught her watching the new Top Gun Maverick movie without me, and ever since then, things have just never been the same. I honestly wish I could talk more about it, but Leon Nottingham says that I talk too much in my video, so I guess we'll just sit here in silence. Uh, after, you know, thank you for the channel members but i i would like to thank you more but i i don't want to talk too much so anyways goodbye leon i just want you to know that i am very jealous of you okay it must be so nice having all that extra room in your pants with that tiny ass fucking dick anyways to make myself feel better about getting cheated on i would like to watch other people get cheated on and see how they react so uh yeah let's do this Yo, this nigga got a yeah, that, uh, dude has a- he has a chainsaw, yeah! I like how he struggled to cut that tiny little table in half, so he decided to go slice and dice up her couch. I mean, I had always heard of people doing dumb shit when they break up with their significant other, but I had never heard of a person breaking out a chainsaw and just cutting shit up. Unfortunately, we don't have much context here as to what actually happened, but um, I'm sure it wasn't good. I don't know too many people that are willing to just go ape shit on their living room furniture for absolutely no reason, so uh, yeah. I need you to shut the fuck up! Anytime you see a world star watermark, you just you know the video is gonna be fire already. I don't care about her. I never fucking did. Yes, you did. What's up with you? Fucking do it then. I'm gone. Fucking bro. do it. Please, get out. You breaking up with me? Get the fuck out. Yeah. <sighs> fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. So this dude is the definition of big fucking mad, and unfortunately we don't have a ton of context here. We don't really know who cheated on who, but I'm just gonna take a guess and say the guy cheated because he said something about it was five months ago. Which if that's the case, I didn't know there was a time limit on this stuff. I mean, hell, if you cheat and she don't catch you within the first 30 days, then you're good. It practically didn't happen. Obviously, I'm just joking here, but isn't it pretty sad how this girl is sitting down having a conversation with him? Meanwhile, this little shit is just out here throwing chairs across the room, getting all in her face, screaming and stuff. And if you're gonna put a video like this out there on the internet, could you at least pick up the room a little bit, please? You know, the craziest part about this is that they didn't break up. She says right here in the video she's surprised they didn't. I mean... I don't know if I'm surprised or if I just think you're stupid at this point, but you know, to each their own. You know, I was really trying to sit here and come up with a reason to be like, hey, I mean, we've all been there, you know, we've all been a little angry before, but I, I can't actually. There was a time where my ex-girlfriend took a dong in the booty hole and I wasn't really like, I wasn't that mad, man. I was not that mad. If anything, I was like, thank God I have a reason to leave. All right, we're going to play two truths and a lie. You guys ready? Yes. Sure. Okay. I'm a brunette. Duh. I can dunk on a 10 foot rim. No. And I found out that Jay and Alex were talking the whole time that Jay and I were together. Are you, are you serious right now? Amelia, stop. Amelia, what are you doing? Come on, that's not funny. Let's talk about this. Stop filming. Now this right here seems to be a growing trend on TikTok where three girls will get together and they'll all agree to shoot a fake video where they start off by saying two truths and a lie and the last thing they say is something about their friend sleeping with their significant other. Now here's the thing, these videos are about as real as Cardi B's personal flotation devices. Anyways, after watching all of this, I think I've come to the expert conclusion that if your girl walks on two legs, I mean, I ain't saying she's gonna cheat, but just don't say I didn't warn ya. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I want to shout out the world's greatest channel members of all time. We've got Niga, Singa, Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. Guys, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But um, more importantly, fellas...
Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content, and I will catch you guys next time. Later. You guys are Damn. fucking ass. And we never tell you that before. You're not going to win the game. Looks like we're we are, gonna win the game. It looks Watch. like we're winning the game. Let's Watch me win this game. You got nine oh, kills. Why are you stupid? Why you stupid? Why you stupid? Why you stupid? You don't want mommy to bow down to me. Yeah, stay mad. Shut the fuck up. You've literally gotten one in three yeah. since you're going to Bro, if you're going to win, you better start trying no. now. Because up, oh, you stuttered. Shut up. It's not looking good for you. You stuttered. You stuttered. Shut up. Shut up talking. Oh, you oh, almost fucked them all. You are fucking yeah, but you ass. Yeah, out too. The girl aim really didn't Shut help you. Like you sorry. are so fucking ass. You're ass, bro. Shut up, what? My name You're terrible. Look at that. You got Wait, 300 and you lost the gunfight. Read my name one more time. You'll bow down to Shut the up. Up, up, you stuttered. Shut up. Man, you're a loser. You're a fucking time. loser. Yeah, Shut you up. get no viewers. You're Shut up. Gonna lose. Dead Twitch channel. I got two claymores. Kill. And that's a six one. Yeah, you're fucking so ass. You thought you were gonna hey, win. Remember huh? when you said you were gonna Maybe win? Maybe should have oh, yeah, backed out. You had one Maybe round. Maybe should have backed out. Maybe should have backed out. What happened? Fuck, I thought you were gonna turn up. Wait, what is that? You couldn't Excuses. beat me, and I went two and six. Excuses. You got TV in your name. You're a nobody. Excuses. You get two views. You're trying to act cool for a little bit. Nobody. Lol. 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 If so, then you're in the right spot, because today I want to focus on how much OnlyFans models actually make. I feel like this is a topic that hasn't really been brought up. Most of us will see the big headlines on news articles saying like Black China has made $20 million so far this year, but unfortunately not everyone makes it in this industry. So with that being said, let's get into it. So first off, many people are concerned if the platform is dying or if it's growing and I can easily say with confidence that this platform is going nowhere anytime soon. As of the first quarter in 2022 alone, there are 170 million people on OnlyFans with 1.2 million creators. Hell, this website's gotten so popular at work the other day, there's this old woman, right? She's a damn grandma who's a saint. She's a fucking saint, and she approached me and asked me if I knew what OnlyFans was, and obviously, you know, uh, a brother like me gotta play a little dumb in a situation. Oh no, I've never heard of that. What is that? I don't know, man. It was like talking about the hub with my grandma. Just something, <laughs> something did not sit right with me. Anyways, my point is OnlyFans has a very successful ecosystem at the moment. It's like if you join the platform, you're not joining a dying platform by any means necessary. Now let's talk about the number one question I think most people have concerning OnlyFans, and that's uh, how much money can I bring home? So I actually found this interview with the model, and she talks about the most amount of money she's made in four days. You are huge on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Um, I read somewhere, it's like your top, you're laughing, <laughs> tell me. Like, yeah, I'm huge. <laughs> no, I am top. But you like, are. Zero, one percent. And That's I've, insane. I've made more money than I ever imagined I would make off of porn. The most money I ever made with it mm -hmm. was, I had like a ton of viral videos, um, this one four day span, and I made 200K in four days. Okay, it so I'm crazy. quitting my job and why so the fuck are we here? It's, it's now, I think a lot of us become numb to the idea of what $200,000 looks like in cash. I mean, hell, for crying out loud, that's what most people spend on their damn house in 30 years. And I also found this graph that shows the top creators for 2021. And dude, these numbers are just stupid. It is actually ridiculous how much money they're bringing in. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we've all seen these success stories and seen the astronomical amounts of cash these people are bringing home, but one thing we don't talk about 
is the average size creators, all right? Think about people like me on YouTube. There are people that are my size on OnlyFans doing the same kind of shit, you know, that I'm doing. The only difference is they're exposing their asshole to the entire world for $4.99 a month. And me, well, I just play video games and that's about it, really. So I'm not gonna lie, this is actually pretty sad, but most accounts on OnlyFans take home less than $145 a month. I feel like a lot of people forget, you know, we see all these success stories, girls driving around in Lambos, topless, talking about their paychecks. Honestly, it makes everyone forget that Emily from Walmart has her asshole available for $4.99 and... Here she is making 140 bucks a month. Now, like I said earlier, you know, my channel and what I do is not that much different than what some other people do on that platform. The only difference is when I'm done making a video and let's say it gets 20 views. I mean, it's a failure of a fucking video. The only thing I'm losing out on is time. The amount of effort I'd put into that video to make it. Meanwhile, the people on OnlyFans, they're literally showing things that could ruin their fucking lives. Like, imagine you picked on some kid in high school and they found out you got an OnlyFans now. Oh, dude, your fucking life is over at that point. Don't get me wrong, there's gonna be some people out there that it doesn't affect at all and they just don't care, but, I mean, that can, like, really fuck someone up if that gets into the wrong hands. Anyways, I'm not sitting here trying to convince everyone to just delete OnlyFans and not do it again. That's not what I'm doing by any means necessary. I'm just trying to bring up the fact that I don't think a lot of people realize what the average person makes on OnlyFans. At the end of the day, that's a decision the creator has to make, you know, is that $140 worth showing that kind of content out there on the internet for some people the answer is going to be yes like they heavily rely on that 140 bucks i mean it doesn't sound like much but could be their groceries could be what they use to feed their kids put gas in the car you know all that fun shit that we all get to pay for nowadays and especially thanks to the never-ending increasing inflation you know but as for most people that are doing this type of content do you really need that 140 dollars probably Probably not. With all that being said, what you do in your free time is none of my business. I don't care as long as it doesn't affect me in any way. But I made a video very similar to this about a year ago talking about the dark side of OnlyFans, how girls like would start in OnlyFans, it didn't make any money, and then it just got used against them. Like people were literally cyberbullying them. And anymore, dude, like all these girls that I meet in real life are always talking about I should just quit my job and do OnlyFans. Well, listen, Sabrina, okay, you are not very attractive. I can't imagine you look much better naked unless you enjoy being bullied for a very small amount of cash every month. I mean, you know, then by all means be my guest, but I'm just saying there's definitely a dark side to OnlyFans and I don't think a lot of people consider that. They see the success stories, but there's also a lot more to the platform than just taking some pussy pics and uploading them online. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I also really appreciate the world's greatest channel members of all time. We have Niga Singa, Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. Guys, thank you so much for your support. It really does mean everything to me. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But um, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content, and I will catch you guys next time. Later. When I got out of my marriage, I wanted people to know that I was single right away. Mm -hmm. so I was gonna okay, so I don't think it exactly takes a rocket scientist to figure this out, but it looks like Lana's having even more daddy issues than before. Anyways, when it comes to Lana Rhodes on the yellow YouTube, I think we're all pretty familiar with her work, and I can't deny she did a good job. You know, she did great at laying on her back and sitting down on certain objects. Other than that, dude, this bitch is fucking crazy, all right? She is actually mentally insane. So let me get you all up to speed. Lana Rhodes has a 
YouTube channel, and she used to post a podcast on this pretty frequently. However, once she got pregnant, she kind of went off the deep end and deleted all her videos. There was this huge falling out between her and these other two women on the podcast, and uh, things got fucking ugly, man. She blocked one of the chicks, and here she is sitting next to her like nothing happened. I mean, dude, I, I don't fucking understand these girls. So, uh, yeah, Lana Rhodes pretty much got knocked up and just disappeared off the internet for 10 months and boom here she is acting like nothing ever happened the the father of my child and then with my ex-boyfriend who kept like trying to talk to me during my pregnancy but then just not treating me the right way yeah. and so i ended up feeling very like just rejected and unwanted by the two men that i thought that i loved at the time and so i feel like that sort of bought on like oh mm -hmm. it's because you're you're fat right now that's why they don't that's why they're not treating you or loving you. Yeah, yeah. that's a I huge get, part. Yeah. I got like that in my head too. Hold up a sec. I gotta clean my goddamn ears out. Did I did I hear that correctly? Play that back one more time. Just rejected and unwanted by the two men that, that I loved at the time. So let me get this straight. You, Lana Rhodes, who is all of 95 pounds, even after having a child, thinks that two guys you are trying to play don't love you because you are fat? Like, what? What the fuck? Where did that logic even come from? Like, did you ever consider the fact that maybe these two guys, they don't, they don't want to have the balls touch man like they ain't out here trying to have no threesome they just want you to themselves like i don't know if lana is just trying to get some compliments here and boost her ego but you're really gonna tell me that this woman thinks she's fat and that doesn't even make sense because i see fat chicks get love all the time like where is this logic even coming from so i actually gave birth completely alone which was my choice my mom wanted to be there a bunch of people wanted to be there i just felt more comfortable doing it alone I ain't gonna lie, she had me in the first half. You know, I almost shed a tear right there, fellas. I almost did it. Like, that's a really sad thought, you know? You go through nine months of pain and suffering and just to raise up this stupid fucking kid that's gonna hate you when he's 14. And during one of the biggest moments of your entire life, you have to go through that alone. Like, you know, the father of this child ain't even gonna be there. He's not gonna see his grandma when he pops out of the vagine. But once again, this logic doesn't exactly line up for me because you feel more comfortable doing this alone you should feel pretty comfortable with your pants off by now now i ain't trying to be rude when i say this but you know if lana Rhodes vagina had a mileage counter on it similar to most modern day vehicles let's just say she would be driving around an 04 civic i mean it's got a lot of miles on it at this point it still gets you from a to b but not that well i mean it's still a good car it's just uh yeah you know like it's leaking oil transmissions going out she's knocking a little bit like but that's what i was telling him as well i was like i can't sleep with you i'm not there yet emotionally with you mm -hmm. because i very much need that emotional connection as well why the fuck you lying why you always lying Oh my God. So once again, I'm going to try and add up the logic here. So uh, if you take a look at the mathematical equation I put on your screen, most of us are going to see that 2 plus 2 equals 4. However, in the world of Lana Rhodes, 2 plus 2 equals screw me in my butthole while I do a backflip underwater and semen comes out of my nose. You guys remember the little Honda Civic talk we had not too long ago? Yeah, this is the same girl saying she needs an emotional connection to do it with someone. Like, come the fuck on, man. The same chick who I watched take like 30 dicks in the booty hole in one single sitting and sit here telling me, I need love, I need emotion, I need like all this other bullshit. You know what I think it is, man? I think she's got some really bad post-nut clarity. Also, let's not forget, it's very easy to put our emotions on the back burner when millions of dollars are being deposited into our bank accounts. When I got out of my marriage, I wanted people to know that I was single right away. That's mm -hmm. what I was gonna say. So like, how does she also incorporate like, she's single? No, by the way, I'm also single. <laughs> she's single. single. Oh my God, my, right. my ex-boyfriend thinks that he has the best dick ever. And I'm like, no, sweetie. I tell all my boyfriends that because it feels like that in the moment, but mm -hmm. then after it's like, mm -hmm. Once it wasn't like shit. Yeah, well, I, I was gonna say so. Now I know this is gonna be difficult for many of us here to admit because we've all been supporters of Lana at least once in our life. And uh, I think I can safely say this woman is fucking mentally insane. My God, just take a goddamn prescription. Please just take it from me. Like it's bad enough you tried to date two guys at the same time and you think that they don't love you because you're fat, okay? I'll, I'll excuse that one, you know, we all get a freebie every now and then. 
Then you bring up the idea that you want to have this child by yourself and you don't want to allow the father or your mother to be in the room at the same time as you. And not only that, man, not only fucking that, it continues getting worse. Now, I don't say this very often, but this is bullshit, okay? This is hypocrisy at its finest. Now, obviously, I'm not going to include a lot of this boring shit in my video, but this podcast is like an hour long and 90% of it is talking about focusing on your mental health and making sure your energy is lining up with one another. But yet here you are talking about as soon as you get out of marriage, you want everyone to know that you're single. And at the same time, you're sitting here lying to all these men telling them that their stick is great. But yet when you're done, you're like, that ain't shit. You know, you're just another person at that point, which is to be expected from a woman like this. Okay. If you ever think you got something special in your pants, I promise you, this is the woman that's had better. But still, I don't understand how you're going to sit here and say, like, I'm a huge mental health advocate and I care so much about everyone's mental, but yet at the same time, you're mentally fucking your ex-boyfriends. And not in the good way, okay? Not in the good way that most people want to be fucked by Lana Rhodes. Anyways, fellas, that's got to be it for today's video. I'm literally losing brain cells by the second at this point. And if you guys can't tell, I am sick, so I probably do sound like fucking horse shit at this point. But, um, anyways, yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. But you know what else I really appreciate? The world's greatest channel members I've ever fucking seen, dude. Okay, first off, we have Mr. Niga Singa, Savarstis, Zingies, and that's it. Guys, thank you so much for your support. It really does mean everything to me. If you would like to support the channel yourself, consider becoming a member today. But uh, more importantly, fellas, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content. And I will catch you guys next time. Later. Contrary to popular memes on the internet, he would not come out. People said he was going to come out like a water slide. He said, fuck you guys. Boy, okay. boy do I wish that he did. <laughs>
left hand are totally fine looking at you. I just do not get that thought process. And don't get it twisted. I definitely understand, you know, if some dude is like staring at your butthole saying, mmm, that looks like a nice ass. I don't think he was doing that though. And also, I like the caption of this video. Good thing daddy set the bar real high and raised me to never take any disrespect. I'd say daddy should have taught you a lot of other things, but uh, you getting disrespected here, that simply just didn't happen. There are so many ways you could have handled this situation, and yet you chose probably one of the worst ways I could have imagined. Rather than walking into the gym and trying to start beef with one of the employees, you could have just simply said like, hey, please stop staring at me, it makes me uncomfortable. That's an option. Here's another one for you, and this one, this is really gonna blow your minds, okay? <laughs> Put on some fucking clothes. Now your father might have taught you to not take any disrespect, and that's great and all really, but he clearly didn't teach you to wear fucking clothes in public, and um, I don't know if the man, maybe the man wanted a stripper daughter, okay? God, all I can think about is Susan in some fucking tight <clears throat> Anyways, getting back on track here, clearly this woman was trying to be some internet tough guy girl thing, you know? I'm not here to judge, I'm just saying. It takes a lot of balls to film something like this and then go out there and actually throw it up on the internet and go as far as saying you're the one in the right here. Like, that's a very pompous attitude to have. You're a headstrong person at that point, and I get it. But I just think you should know you're also a huge fucking pussy because I found your link tree and your Instagram has been deactivated, your TikTok has been privated, your Twitter has been deactivated, and my favorite part about this whole situation is that if she came out and made an apology video saying, I was in the wrong, I shouldn't have done that now that I looked Look back on it you know things would be cool like I think people would understand like at some point we all make mistakes and we got to own up to them you know that's just part of life but you're too fucking chicken to even do that this is just a classic case of the exposer getting exposed and I'm all for it fellas with that being said that's it for today's video thank you all so much for watching I really do appreciate it you know what else I really really appreciate is Susan in the fucking tight anyways the world's greatest channel members of all goddamn time first off we have mr niga singa savarstis and that's it guys thank you so much for your support it really does mean everything to me if you would like to support the channel yourself consider becoming a member today but uh more importantly fellas be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and i will catch you guys next time later there it is man we're having to sweat a little bit. Right now, I'm just going to take this stuff and hit up front. Ty, she said you can use some. We got all the time in the middle of the room. Where people would try to accredit a female streamer's success to their male partner. Shut up, bitch! Oh my god!